Hi, it's Greg Hurrell here with another Vim screencast and I want to talk about Vim profiling and specifically how to make Vim start up quickly. Um, and so here's a little table of contents of things that I want to cover tonight. Um, I want to talk about how you gather information from Vim to see where time is being spent. Um, and then once you've identified the slow parts, I want to talk about a couple of tools for making them fast. Um, so the, the topics I want to cover there are auto loading and deferring work until the user is idle and not doing anything. So yeah, the first thing I want to cover is script names. Um, script names is a command that is documented like most Vim commands. Um, it shows you all the things that have been loaded, all the files that were loaded as part of the boot up process. So let's run it. Um, you can see that I had 142 files that were evaluated as part of this boot up process. Um, it doesn't tell me how long they took, but this is a good kind of ballpark order of magnitude estimate of like how much work is being done. Um, it is useful for catching things that you wouldn't expect to be evaluated during the, the boot up that are being evaluated. So maybe you have something that you intended to evaluate lazily that's actually being loaded eagerly. eagerly. You can catch it using script names. Um, another thing that script names is good for is just seeing what order things ran in because sometimes you have a file which tries to set thing, things up in a certain way and then a setting gets clobbered by a later file. That's like an ordering issue um, and this can help you discover what the ordering problems are. But it doesn't tell you the timing information. Um, so that's where we turn to this startup time switch, uh, which as it says here, um, is available whenever the startup time feature has been baked into Vim at compile time, which as far as I know is basically always. Um, and so what this does is print that script name list to a log file, um, but it includes timing information. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Um, so at the moment, I am, I'm at this point you know, after this series of optimizations, um, I mean, I, I want to go back to before the optimizations so that you can see uh, what that output looked like. So the first, the first thing I did was patch what you complete me to shave off a quarter of a second. So let's go back before that change and let's run Vim. I'm going to remove the log file because I've obviously already done this. Um, I'm going to run Vim logging timing information to the log file. So startup time, log file, and then I can open the log file in the same invocation. That was noticeably slow to my eye. Um, 663 milliseconds, that, that's what that number in the left column is. So the, the general approach here is you wanna look at this list here for places where the number jumps, because that's an indication that something blocked and took a while. Um, so at 21 milliseconds, we start evaluating files, and there's nothing we can really do to speed up the work before that, but we can certainly look through this list of files, um, looking for slow ones, and, and there's one right there. Um, command T, Isengard, took like 70 milliseconds, so better deal with that. Um, if you look here, bundle, the word bundle appears a lot. Uh, that's basically, these are all plugin files, right? And um, we tend to use a lot of plugins as Vim users, so there's gonna be some hang low hanging fruit here to scoop up. Um, I can also see here nerd tree. Nerd tree, each individual file is pretty fast. If you look at the timings on the left there, they take one or two or three milliseconds each. But when you add them all up, the first nerd tree file here happened at uh, 98 milliseconds and the last one at 123. So we're looking at about 25 milliseconds across all those files. So the next thing I'd want to do is figure out why is this thing being loaded eagerly when I could probably load it on demand when I first try to interact with it. Um, so I'll do that later, but I, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to cut to the, uh, the chase and reveal that the slowest part the lowest hanging fruit was you complete me. You can see here at 295 milliseconds, this file was evaluated, but then we blocked until 663 milliseconds. So that's by far the single largest chunk uh, in the startup process. So I'm gonna show you the pull request that I sent to you complete me to try to fix this. Um, basically the root issue is that it's doing this work here um, to try and defer evaluating this very expensive function, you complete me enable. It's um, using the vim enter auto command, which fires right at the end of the boot process. Um, the trouble is, as you can see here, it is part of the boot process. So merely waiting to the end doesn't avoid doing the work, it just shifts it later. Um, and so what the pull request does is make it possible to switch in different auto commands. Um, and the ones that I suggest are cursor hold and cursor hold I. So let's look up those. Cursor hold is an auto command that's gonna fire when the user is idle, when they're not interacting with the keyboard. Um, and cursor hold I is similar, but it operates in insert mode. So these things are gonna wait for a period of an activity that corresponds to update time 
four, mil four seconds by default. Um, I've set this to two seconds in my VMRC, um, partly because it seems like a reasonable compromise, but also because you complete me itself is going to set it to two seconds anyway when it does finish booting. So we may as well just wait for two seconds. Um, so with that pull request, we effectively move this inclusion completely out of the critical path and we'll save 250 milliseconds from boot. So I'm going to show you what that what ramifications that has in practice. Um, so the ramification, the ramification that has in practice um, is that at this version that I've got checked out where the optimization is not in place, you complete me is going to load eagerly and I can use it straight away. So I'm going to like load some like JavaScript file, which you can see I use foo.js a lot. Um, so let's actually open that again. So it's empty now. If I start typing immediately when I get in there, I'll see a completion menu. So let, there you go. I typed a couple letters and I saw a completion menu. That's because you completely loaded. If I instead switch to the rev, which has the optimization, and I try to start typing immediately, there's no menu. And the reason is I haven't been idle yet. But while I've been talking, I have been idle, and you complete me will have loaded. So I, there you go, there was a completion menu right there. So, so that is an acceptable degradation for me uh, because I'm, it, I'm not that often like opening Vim and like starting to type immediately. I do stop and think about what I'm gonna type. So there, there is always a chance for you complete me to load. Um, and so I think that's a good, good trade off because it means now when I load Vim, it feels basically instantaneous. So let's keep looking at things that I did. Um, I already highlighted that this Isengard file was slow. It turns out that that file didn't do anything useful. It's just a de in development feature that only I have turned on. Um, so this won't affect any users of command T. It only affects me, but like there's no point in me having this thing turned on when it doesn't even work yet. So turn it off, save hundred milliseconds. Um, this next one is a little bit interesting, the uh, deferring the setup of shortcut variables, saving 20 milliseconds. So let's have a look at what I did there. Um, and this is gonna lead me to a discussion of auto loading. So let's check out that rev again so I can show you what the stuff used to look like. Um, anyway, yeah. This is the function that was slow. Um, and this is the line that was slow. It was, a, it was a fork call. We're basically forking the Z shell. And um, even though it's not an interactive shell and so it's not like sourcing Z shell C or anything like that, it's still 20, 25 milliseconds. Um, what this thing does is beyond the scope of the screencast, but the basic idea is that it looks at some configuration from Zish and defines variables that I can use in Vim. Um, so what I need to do is not execute this expensive line. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I did that in terms of auto-loaded functions. So let's go back to master again. I'm gonna show you where this function is now. It's been moved into the auto-load directory. Um, auto-loaded functions are functions with hash in the name. And all of these files in this auto load directory, Vim is not gonna load them. Um, and so they won't affect startup time. Vim will only load them when I try to invoke a function that is defined in one of these files. And the reason it knows to load a particular file is because it's going to employ a convention where if I try to run variables hash in it, it wants to find a file at auto load slash variables. And um, it's gonna look inside that file for a file with this name. Um, and you can nest these things. So you'll notice here I've got a mappings file as well. So if I call the function mappings leader zap, Vim's gonna look in auto load mappings leader, auto load slash mapping slash leader for that function with this name. Um, so that's part of the solution. Part of the solution is moving the file, moving the expensive work into an auto loaded function. But as we saw with that, you complete me pull request, merely having something auto loaded doesn't make it fast. It's only fast if you don't call the auto-loaded function. So the way we're gonna do that is by using those cursor hold events. Um, so I wanted a general mechanism for making this happen. Um, and I'm gonna show you what that mechanism is. Auto commands. So basically when Vim is starting up, uh, we're gonna set up this cursor hold auto command um, and it's gonna call this idle boot function uh, when that happens. So let me... Where is it? This file here, idle boot. What does idle boot do? The important line is this one. It's gonna fire yet another auto command, um, a user command, Vincent defer. What this basically does is provide me with an abstraction by which any part of my dot file 
my, any part of my Vim configuration can say, hey, look, I want to register some work to be done at some later time when the user's idle in a kind of decoupled way. Um, and so what would happen if I tried to run this twice? I don't know if you can hear that, but somebody dropped something. Um, if I try to run this twice, for example, by sourcing this file again, what is going to happen? Well, first of all, if Vim starting is going to be false, so we're not going to set it up again. Um, but furthermore, when idle boot is called, it's actually going to clear the cursor hold auto command. So even though cursor hold events happen all the time, we're basically going to use them on a, as a kind of one-off thing where the first time we get called, we're going to tear down the, the subscription. Um, and so idle boot will get called at most once and these Vincent defer jobs will get executed at most once. Um, so how do you register a job that you want to run in a deferred way? Well, this is what it looks like. Um, this is the file where I used to have that expensive function, and now instead of the expensive function, I just register um, to be notified when the Winston defer auto command happens. I want you to call variables in it, which is the auto loaded function. Um, and so that means it's no longer in the critical path. And so when we start Vim with this startup time flag, it took 150 milliseconds instead of 500. Um, to show how that like deferral stuff works in practice, it's kind of like the you complete me thing where if I rely on fruit of that deferred work immediately upon launching into Vim, it won't be done yet. But if I'm idle for a couple of seconds, it will be. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Um, I'm going to put a variable. I'm going to hash one of these things. Foo equals foobar. I'm going to put it in. Whoops. I'm just trying to think about where I'm going to put this thing. There we go. Let's try this. Um, basically what this, this function is supposed to do is look at all the hash directories and it should define a foo variable inside Vim for me to use, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is open Vim and try to echo foo and because I haven't been idle, it should print nothing. So let's echo, oops, foo, if I could type, printed nothing. I'm gonna be idle for a couple seconds, I'm gonna try again. Foobar. Um, so that's how it works in practice. And let's go back to where I was before. We've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Um, my next mission then is to keep looking for low-hanging fruit. Uh, you know, 150 milliseconds is pretty fast, uh, but if I can shave off all that nerd tree time, then it's gonna get down to like 125 and then I'm really aiming to the low-hanging fruit where I'm like loading, you know, 100 files and spending 100 milliseconds booting. I don't know how much lower I'm going to be able to go. Um, but those are generally the techniques that you want to use. Um, thanks for uh, watching, and I hope you tune in again soon for another Vim screencast.